extraordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories around the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there, welcome to Core TV News on the hour. I am Geft or Gete. As speculations grow on who will emerge as the running mate to its presidential candidate Mohammed Buhari, the All Progressives Congress has assured Nigerians that the choice of its presidential running mate will be made within the context of the best democratic ideals, just like that of its presidential candidate. In a statement issued in Lagos on Sunday by its National Publicity Secretary Lai Mohammed, the party urged Nigerians to ignore the widespread and misleading reports in the traditional and social media about the choice of the APC presidential running mate, saying the party has not had a meeting even not to talk of picking a running mate. It described the report that the running mate has been picked to run with its presidential candidate, Mohammed Buhari, as unnecessary, sensational, downright speculative, and totally misleading. The party said every one of the candidates who have been speculated as a running mate to Buhari is unquestionably competent to be a vice president or even president of Nigeria, but ordered that no choice has been made by the party. The party also expressed its appreciation at the feedback its presidential primaries has brought to it from Nigerians, assuring that it will also be guarded by the same principles in subsequent decisions. The presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Mohammed Buhari, has held a closed-door meeting with former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. The two men who jostled for APC's presidential ticket last week met at Atiku's residence in Abuja. Details of the meeting were not made public, but there are indications that Mohammed is keen, uh, Buhari is keen on ensuring a united party during the run-up to the 2015 presidential elections. Both men also exchanged thoughts on the party's vice presidential slot. With the emergence of the presidential candidate of both major parties for the 2015 general elections, the All Progressives Congress in Ondo State and the Ondo State Chapter of the Buhari Campaign Organization say the party will defeat the incumbent in Ondo State. The APC and the Buhari Campaign Organization say the rising profile of the casino born retired General Muhammad of Buhari before and after the choice as APC's presidential flag bearer shows that it would be a landslide victory for him in the state. This accession was made in a congratulatory message to the APC candidate jointly signed by the APC Publicity Secretary Omoaba Adeshoya and Ifeolua Oyedele of the Buhari Campaign Organization. They also say the 2015 elections provide Nigeria and Nigerians a clear-cut opportunity to change a bad and dysfunctional government to an efficient one. The protests which greeted the emergence of Simeon Ajibola as a flag bearer of the People's Democratic Party for the Kwara State Governorship election seems to have spurred the candidate into action. He described the protest against him as nothing but the handiwork of enemies. Rashid Rashid has more on the controversy surrounding his emergence in this report. The contest for the PDP's governorship ticket in Kwara State no doubt led to a totally unexpected result with the emergence of Simeon Ajibola ahead of other highly favored candidates such as Deli Belgore and Bemi Saraki. But barely 48 hours after the emergence of Ajibola, protests from some party faithfuls against his candidature has started, with the protesters expressing sadness over his emergence. <laughs> Protest leader Sheyi Martins expressed disappointment over the primaries which he described as a grand manipulation of delegates for Ajibola, who according to him is not a popular candidate. Boras are saying no to the party, to the uh, person that emerged as a candidate of the Pwara PDP in the forthcoming gubernatorial election. This is a very, very unpopular candidate. Even in his word, they don't know him. 
He cannot win his polling units. In the last election, we understand how he manipulated the election to win. To be in the Senate today, since the past 12 years, he has been in the Senate's house. What has he done? In his own submission, Abdullahi Abdullahi requested the national leadership to conduct another primaries because Ajibullah is nothing but a stooge of the opposition or in the alternative for him to relinquish the ticket for a better and well-known candidate. That we are calling on the national PDP, national headquarters, to find the, to null and cancel this particular um, election because it is kangaroo election because the original delegates have been disallowed because they intimidated them with their talks and everything, political talks. So we please want the national headquarters of PDP to cancel this particular primaries and organize another free and fair election to allow the popular candidate to emerge and deliver a quarter for PDP. That is it. But in a swift response, the candidate Simeon Ajibala says the protest is an afterthought and one orchestrated by enemies from a transparent, free and fair process with a popular mandate. Well, it was a very, uh, I mean, it was conducted under a very level playing ground, uh, free of uh, any attempt to leak and uh, transparent. So what does it pretend for PDP? Well, it's, I mean, it's going to unite PDP because everybody was given the opportunity to express their desire and this was democratically decided under a free, fair, and credible primary. With this apparent show of disunity within the PDP, the road to 2015 and efforts aimed at displacing the APC in the state may just have been made a little more difficult. Rashid Rashid for TV News, Ilori. The All Progressives Congress in Ikuti State has criticized Governor Yodili Fayoshi and his aides for condemning President, uh, former President Ulisha Gobasanjo on behalf of the people of the state. The party in a statement signed by its publicity secretary in the state, Taiwo Olatu Bosung, says the recent verbal offensive launched against the former president is in the individual capacity of those involved or on behalf of your party and not on behalf of the people of Ikuti has claimed. According to him, Fayoshi is not qualified to speak on behalf of Ikiti people in a clearly political disagreement between PDP gladiators. He maintained that Ajayi, who criticized Abbasanjo on behalf of the state for not obeying a court order, was not known to law as the Attorney General of the state because he was not screened and confirmed by a properly constituted House of Assembly. It's still the core TV news. We'll take a break. Stay with us. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. I see you as a and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics a woman will be bold enough to stand up and say i want to become president of nigeria only on core tv news uh, do not forget that you can also reach us on our social media platforms on facebook facebook.com slash core tv news on twitter at core tv news ng and on uh, YouTube, it's youtube.com slash call TV, Living Space News. Ibadan, the York State capital, has once again recorded another incident of violence, which is the latest in the recent spate of violence that has reemerged since the lifting of ban on political campaign and activities by the Independent National Electoral Commission. The latest which occurred at the popular Agbaje market in the heart of the city started during a carnival party that, and two lives are reportedly to have been lost as a result of the violent clash between the two rival groups who were said to have been well armed in their reign of terror, which also led to looting of shops in the market. Court TV News monitored the situation. The report is presented from our studios. These are indeed dangerous signals for the city of Ibadan and on your state as the general elections gradually draws near.
with a steady stream of violence clashes, giving rise to fears of a return to the bad old days of violence in the state. The latest and growing list of such is the midnight clash between two rival groups of hoodlums who engaged themselves in a free-for-all that allegedly led to the loss of two lives, but not without leaving innocent residents and shop owners within the battleground. The popular Agwaje market in the Agbeni area of the city counting the cost the morning after. I'm at home, something between 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock. People starting calling me, say that Agbeni have been bloody. They have been making rayons at Agbeni. I didn't know what caused the problem. So the moment I come Agbeni this morning, I see that they have already vandalized all the shop. They call them Omomata. They just started the thing without, without point. That they, did this, they do this without point. They just read the shop, get the, get the collapses, gone, bought two, and they did, they did everything. And they causing shout to, to everybody. That, that doesn't make uh, people panic. The government should rise up to this. They should mount up security both day and night. Not only in the night, but day and night. Because this started before 10, 10 p.m. yesterday, and they fought till daybreak, breaking shops. We see a lot of shops broken there. We have bought padlocks, we have done a lot of things. We see a lot of policemen were there this morning. But what of in the night? What of yesterday night? What of in the dead of the night? They were not there. Despite the heavy presence of the security men in strategic places around the market, the tension in the area was pervasive as the traders resorted to prayers to ask for God's assistance for what they see as a helpless situation, even as they could not display their wares. For caretaker boss of Ibadan Northwest local government, under whose jurisdiction the market falls, Wasu Olatubosu blames the opposition for the spike in violence, while also reiterating government's resolve to resist a return to violence of the past in the state. It shows that why didn't they do it two, three years ago? Why two months to election? And I've been saying it long time ago that people are planning to cause ha like half fuck in Oyo State in order to rubbish peaceful atmosphere that Oyo, pe Oyo State people have been enjoying for the past three and a half years. Their plan is to rubbish one of the most uh, effective cardinal achievement of Senator Zach Abela Jimabi, and that is peace. The state police command, however, says they have prepared a backup plan to address the security challenges currently affecting the state, while also working to amass the mastermind of the latest orgy of manless violence. Efforts aimed at securing the lives and property of residents of Ibadan and Oyo State has gathered momentum with a stakeholders meeting between the police and leaders of thoughts in the state to brainstorm on ways to prevent political violence before, during and after the 2015 general elections. Oyo State Commissioner Police Kola Shodikbo and the chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association Ibadan Chapter Kazim Badamosi both say of vital importance in addressing the issue as well all hands to be on deck and mutual cooperation between the security agencies and the people. Three days before the police can be near in that morning. When the house will come, you will be understand, you will know which you will be expect from the court. And the tool of our do that we should try as much as possible to leave that area.
Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Bala Muhammad, has directed security agencies to read Abuja metropolis of all illegal motor parks. The minister gave this directive at the weekend against the backdrop of traffic, traffic bottlenecks around roundabouts and interchanges across the FCT and peak hours. A statement from the minister's office indicates that security agencies and traffic officers are to focus attention on Berger Junction, Nikon Junction, Area 1, Garki, AYA, Asokoro District, Area 3, Garki District, Federal Secretariat, and the Wuse District Access. The FCT minister also directed the legal bus stops at the Wuse Market, Wuse Bridge, Galadimaya, uh, Galadimawa, and Eagle Square must be cleared to improve free flow of human and vehicular movement, as well as safeguard the location from hoodlums. Meanwhile, 16 people have been jailed for two weeks in Abuja for bridging the ban on commercial motorcycle in the city center. The FCT authorities say nine were discharged and acquitted in a mobile cut where they had been standing trial. He also revealed that 3,241 commercial motorcycles were seized between January and November 17th this year. Several persons were feared dead and many others injured on Saturday night in an explosion at a gas station along Arakale Road in Akure. Eyewitnesses say the fire started at about 7 p.m. during the sale of gas within the station, which is located a few meters from the branch of a bank and a church. There were chaos and confusion as residents ran for cover. These two, Umar Sadiq and another unidentified resident, however, expressed their anger at the failure of emergency services to arrive the scene on time. What I see uh, some people, they shout, say fire, 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 fire. By the time I look out, I see the fire it don't raise up. What, what happened for this? They say na, na gas, it will cause all this fire. Eh? They say na gas, they cause all this fire. I, 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 and I say that, I say we don't have a fire fight. They say we don't have fire fight. Because of what? Fire fight is there, everything is there. But what is the reason why by the fire fight don't come for this place? Eh? What you mean you know it's better? But Stigmatization by people against those living with HIV AIDS once again came into the front banner as the Ocean State Action Committee on AIDS holds a sensitization seminar with calls for a jail team for discrimination against those living with the disease. Rashid Rashid has more in this report. With the Ebola virus being the major concern of health institutions worldwide, it's simple to assume that it has taken the place once occupied by HIV AIDS but this does not obviously eliminate the disease as a major health concern, prompting the Osho State Action Committee on AIDS to make curbing stigmatization its focal point in the fight against the disease in the state. We have stigmatization because people believe it is deadly and they think that it can, they can easily contact it. Once they know that it's not something that can easily be contacted, even sleeping with somebody with HIV, protected sex, one cannot be contacted. According to this resource person, Olali Konwasiu, he advised people living with HIV AIDS need to shrug off the stigma as there are laws that protect them from stigmatization and anyone found guilty of discriminating will be dealt with under the law. If you are somebody with HIV positive, if you find yourself in that realm, being denied employment, go to all these public complaint commission and so on and so forth. Go and complain. Then the anti-discriminatory law will now come in. Resource persons, while praising media organizations for their positive role in combating HIV AIDS in the country, however, charged them to do more awareness against stigmatization and discrimination. And even the university system, in the labor, everywhere discrimination is there. And how do we arrest this? By spreading the, the awareness among uh, employer of labor, university, the media, even the healthcare workers. The media is trying, actually, for advocacy. 
But one thing we need to emphasize is that HIV AIDS is not a deadly disease. The awareness program, which featured free HIV tests and counseling, is a platform to correct the notion of the public and their perceptions about what HIV AIDS is and what it's not. Rashid Rashid, for TV News, Oshobo. Aside from the number of lives that are lost daily as a result of wrong way drive against traffic, the last effect, damaging effect, it leaves is better imagined on Motaya Law who visited the notorious Ojure toll gate point in Ogun State brought back the support and efforts aimed at crubbing the menace of wrong drive way in Ogun State. The Ojure toll gate road is notorious for traffic breed luck and a popular spot where wrong-way drivers are regularly caught. Court TV News School visited the trace office at the toll gate where the officer in charge of the call, Adekunli Ajibani, says road mishaps are primarily caused by impatience on the part of motorists. Uh, they are lawless. They want to beat the time while they, 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 they leave their, their main home very late. That's the truth of the matter. Yes. Not really the road. Not really the road. Of course, that could be part of, but you know, that factor is infinitesimal. It's, it's a very small amount of uh, This allegation, according to the strike cycle riders, was wrong, saying the government has failed in its duty of maintaining the road. The bad road that we have for, uh, the, on the way, because there is a lot of hold up on the way. That is why some used to take one way. Auguste, yeah, we don't have traffic light there, and anybody is free to disobey. Even why is the problem is that even the government, gone, they are disobeying the traffic law. Because when traffic day now, you see some police or some uh, last man, whatever, or trace. Instead of trying to follow that normal way to make people to understand that following one way is bad. But then we still follow one way. For that reason, everybody will join them. Because they are showing us, instead of trying to show the, the, the good way, they are showing us the narrow way. That's the way they follow that way, we will join them. Traffic of uh, in one way cannot stop until they do the overhead bridge. If you reach Oritore now, <laughs> you say you will be very terrible. Everything is very blocked. Though, according to the commander of Trace, commercial drivers form a higher percentage of traffic offenders than private owners. But Stephen Ashojo, in his private car, says it passes through L on the road. The main cause of one way issue is just because of the bad road. When you get to that side at Ojuri, you see the, there is a lot of flood on the road. And that is why majority of people always take one way to avert themselves from that flood. The commander of Trace, Adekunle Ajibade, says the Corps has gone into partnership with agencies to reduce the rate of road offences to the BRS minimum through sensitization. We have a group of our people that moves from one gather to other every day to sensitize to show them videos, to show them pictures, and not only guide this back too. We go to primary school, we go to secondary school. Clearly not happy with the Ogun State Government and the state of the road, this motorist has this advice for all the road users. Despite that, despite the fact that the government are not doing their responsibility, people should avoid one way. That's the way I see it. People should also definitely, if you are in the go slow for hours, you will definitely get to your destination at the end of the day, instead of taking five minutes risk and go to heaven. That's by a series of disciplinary measures put in place to discourage traffic offenses and bad road using habit. Some are still in the act of breaking traffic laws. Omotaiwalo, Core TV News, Ogun. And now on our side, Nigeria, one armed man is holding an undisclosed number of hostages in a siege in Sydney. Police said on Monday, adding that it was yet to be deemed a terrorist event. New South Wales State Police Commissioner Andrew uh, confirmed that there is an armed offender in the premises holding an undisclosed number of hostages in the city in the Martin Police area. He ordered that no contact had yet been made with the man. Martin Place in the Central Business District was evacuated as cause of armed police surrounded the linked chocolate cafe with TV pictures showing a flag, black with white Arabic writing, held to a window by customers. It appeared to be the Shashada, or profession of faith in Islam, and says there is no God but Allah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. 
Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott has addressed press, stating that the siege could be politically motivated. However, two female hostages have been released from the cafe. Motivation of the perpetrator. Uh, we don't know uh, whether this is politically motivated, although obviously there are some indications that it could be. National Security Committee of the Cabinet uh, has uh, been briefed on this. It is a very disturbing incident. Uh, I can understand the concerns and anxieties of the Australian people at a time like this, but our thoughts and prayers must above all go out to the individuals who are caught up in this. That's our news for the Tsar. Thank you for watching. Join us again. I am Gift or Gete.